Hey guys, welcome to PatternLab.London. Okay, so to continue with our series of fashion illustration tutorials, we are now looking at part five. So part five is all about creating fashion templates, such as, let's have a look, such as this. Hopefully you can see that we've made the transparency quite light. That we can print out on A4, and then we can obviously sketch with pencil over the top of this to create our fashion illustrations. We'll then pull that back into Adobe Illustrator, place it on top of our, let's say, um, over these templates and then we'll obviously start to digitize that fashion illustration to create a beautiful presentation. So once again in the last tutorials first we looked at creating faces by um, let's say finding imagery online like beautiful black and white portraiture and then obviously tracing around in adding colors and obviously makeup and bits and pieces. The second stage was obviously um, adding makeup so doing different kind of techniques and using um, overlays to create beautiful sort of like makeup concepts. As I said I'm not a makeup designer or makeup artist, so that's my concept on it anyway. And then we also looked at creating various hair pieces for that, um, so let's have a look, for that, for that individual face. So then we could just simply drag and drop each one onto that face, like so. And we have a whole range here that we can add, if that makes sense. Okay, so we obviously created hair pieces to create a very, very different look for each of our faces, and we have four faces in total. And then we obviously looked at creating, um, let's say, body templates just by um, finding lingerie model illustrations online and obviously tracing over those. And the same way we trace the face to create a whole range of different, let's say, illustrations or um, like dynamic, let's say, fashion poses. So once again, now we're going to start looking at how we combine these to create those fashion templates, and then we'll start to add our illustrations on top of it. So it's really simple. So the way we've got this basically set up, we're just going to take our face. So I'm going to go for this girl first of all. Let's use this um, face here. Let's also grab this haircut. I'm just picking them as I go. So I get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this face because it's all grouped together. I'm going to go to my shift tool and click to cure my selection. Click on this hair piece. I'm just going to go edit and then copy because we don't want to destroy any of those original um, assets there. Let's go down the bottom here. I'm going to paste those in and we can even add that hair. There we go. We can add that hair to the face. And all I'm doing is simply, there we go. So we've got our hair piece. I'm just getting my big section tool because it's all grouped. I'm just going to drag it over to roughly the right position. Let's zoom in. To zoom in, it's Command plus on your keyboard. To zoom out, it's Command minus. And if you want to move around the page, hold down the space key, and you can see that you can click and drag. You have this little hand icon. Click and drag. And then, so once it's in place, we can then use the nudge keys. So with the hair selected, big selection tool, hair selected, just simply nudge with the arrow keys to move that around and into position. So I'm quite happy with that position there. We can then get our big selection tool, click and drag object and then group so now it's not two elements it's one which is great and then just let's just pick someone from our lineup let's go for this one for example let's just go edit copy so big selection tool to click on it and it should all be grouped so it's one piece edit copy and then let's just simply paste now I've made these faces and these haircuts all the same size um, by that what I mean is the face should suit the body should be proportionate to the body and we can just simply add that in and we might need to do a little bit of work here when it comes to the neck line and the hairline. Okay, so we always have to do a tiny little bit of work here to adjust them. So let's just move this point up ever so slightly. So I'm doing that just simply by going to my small selection tool, which is the white one, clicking on that line to then find the point. Click on the point, let's drag that up. We can then use this little handle, click, and then pull and drag that down. And let's just get rid of the color layer for now. And then with the hair here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to get my small selection tool, which is the white one once again click on the line to find the point and let's just drag that down because we want that hair type of cut to go behind her neck. We can also get rid of the colour layer here as well. Let's just move that little point in. We can maybe move this down, move this up ever so slightly. Yeah, it's looking good. Move that point in because that's where the neckline starts. And once again, the hair is behind her. Just move these points. There we go. Probably sort out this as well. I can simply, oops, click that point, move it out. There we go, I can nudge with my keys, or my arrow keys, and here we're just going to separate. So I'm going to simply snip here. Let's zoom in a little bit so it's clearer. Snip at the neckline here, snip at the neck, oops, snip at the neckline there. Get my small selection tool, click on that element, and hit backspace a few times. And then simply select this line to find that point. Get my pen tool, which is this one, and then just simply, oops, not right click, sorry. Click, click, and then drag. And there we have our hair lining up or matching our body. 
Also, as you can see, we probably want to, now we've removed the fill from the hair, we probably want to do the same for the face. Essentially, what we're looking for is um, a black and white image with no color or fill whatsoever. So let's do that. I'm just going to remove the fill from the face. So I'm just going to get my small section tool, click. In fact, no, let's make it white. Let's actually do it properly. So sorry, let's get my hair. So I'm going to go for the outline of my hair here. And I'm just going to simply hold down the Shift and Alt key. And with the small section tool, what that does is that allows you to select the whole element. If I just clicked with the small selection tool, you see I would only um, I would only be moving one part of that element. If you hold down the Shift and Alt, it will get the whole thing, which is great. So hold down the Shift and Alt key, click on that line there, and then we're going to go Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, and then we're just going to fill this. So double click over here. We're going to fill that with white. Click OK, move that over. And then we're just going to go Object, Arrange, Center Back, which is great. Then we've got a big selection tool. Hang on, let's get our small selection tool. I'm going to click, so Shift and Alt, Shift and Option again. Click on the hair, and we're just going to move it up the layers, or up the layers so it's in front of the face. And to do that, you're just going to go Command, and then Close Square Bracket. It might take a few taps, as you can hear on my keyboard, I'm just tapping that up. Bring it to the front, there we go. Okay, no, that's not working. That's fine, it's because I've grouped all this. So what I'm going to do is get my big selection tool, click on this, go Object, Ungroup, get my big selection tool, click on the actual white filled hairline. I'm also going to hold down the Shift key and click on the actual hair piece itself, and I'm going to go Object and Group, and that should bring it to the front, obviously concealing the face a little bit. Great, okay, so next let's go to our small selection tool. I'm going to click on the face and also the ear pieces, so hold down the Shift key, click here and here. And at the moment we've got this very, very light skin tone. So I'm just going to go double click on the fill. I'm just going to go to white, click OK. We can do the same for the lips. So zoom in, small selection tool, click on the lips. We can also do the same with the irises. Hold down the shift key, click. So small selection tool, click on the lips, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection, click on the iris, click on the oops. Zoom in a little bit more. Click on that iris, and then we're going to go for fill, double click, and then go white. OK. So she's now starting to look a bit more black and white. Also, we want to be drawing, illustrating on top of this, so we don't want her to have any underwear, really, because it might get in the way of her illustration. We want her to be pretty naked, I guess. So I'm just going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click on this element here, hit backspace a few times, click on these little bits as well, just remove these, click backspace, backspace, click on the underwear. And let's also do the same for the shoes. So I'm going to click on the shoe, click on this shoe, and then obviously just remove. So just simply with this one on the top, just simply none. In fact, no, let's make it white. Sorry. Double click on this. Let's go white. And we've got a few bits here that have got some fill. Let's small selection tool. Click on this one. Click on this one. Click and click. And then let's just remove that fill. Okay, so she's now black and white, which is looking great. At the moment, though, she is all a lot of different elements. So let's just get our big selection tool, click and drag over the whole illustration here and go object and then group. Now what we can do is we can go to file and then new. I'm going to go for a new document and I'm going to go for print. I'm going to find A4 because I use A4. You can use US letter if that's the one you use. I'm going to go for A4, click create. And so back on here, oops, sorry, let's get rid of that. So back on this uh, illustration here, I'm just going to go with it all selected and it's all grouped. Edit, copy, and then edit paste. And it's going to be quite large, but that's fine. We can scale it down. So I'm just going to get my big selection tool, select it. And in the top corner here, you have these free transform tools. I want to be careful that I don't transform it in a very odd way. So if you hold down the shift key, it will lock that proportion. You see how it scales beautifully. Let's scale it right down. Let's move it onto our page. Let's zoom in. And then just simply once again, with it selected, click on this little box here, hold down the shift key, and then just scale it up. And we can just move it over into the center, so we've got a bit of space. Let's maybe make it a little bit smaller, move it up a bit so it's in the center of the page. So now we have our fashion illustration, but at the moment it's very, very thick outline lines, which is fine, but we won't be able to draw over it particularly very well. So we need to make this transparent, or at least um, make it opaque, let's say, or um, we're just going to reduce the transparency. So over here on the right-hand column here, you can find transparency. If you can't find it, go to Window, and then, where is it, Transparency. And then here we're going to take it down to about 20%. Let's have a look. And that's pretty transparent. That's not bad at all. We could always take it down to 10, but you want to be careful that when you print it, it is actually visible on the page. So let's make it about 
And there is our lovely fashion template, which we can now start to illustrate on. So now we do is simply go, you can also save this on your desktop or save it to a folder somewhere because it's taking you time to create it, so you might as well save it. So you could call this, oops, uh, fashion template one and just click save to desktop, okay. But now we're gonna print. So I'm just gonna hit the control P on my keyboard to print it. You wanna make sure that it goes to fit to page. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but it's, uh, it's fitting to page and then just simply click print. And then obviously the printer will print that out. And I'll show you the next step. Uh, we'll do some video work. Okay, so these are our printouts of that fashion illustration. So I've actually created three here, just using the same technique I just showed you. And I've printed them out on, obviously, A4 paper. We've made them 20% transparency, so they're faint. You can still see the lines, but it kind of gives you a guide. It's so it doesn't basically interrupt your fashion illustration. And so next, what we're going to be doing is um, using these templates to create fashion illustrations. And here are some that we prepared earlier. I'm not going to show you fashion illustration freehand. This is all about digitizing your illustrations. So we're using these body templates to create these fashion illustrations. We'll then put them into Adobe Illustrator, digitize them, add color, and make them really beautiful, and then obviously put them on top of our, let's say, our models that we created in Adobe Illustrator, create a finished product. Okay, so now we're back in Adobe Illustrator, and we have our scans on the side here. So basically, I've just taken my fashion illustrations, my freehand drawing fashion illustrations, and I've scanned them in. Um, this scan's not particularly very good, but I guess it gives me the basic outlines anyway. So I've scanned in that fashion illustration, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to drag that image, or that fashion illustration, into Adobe Illustrator. I'm just going to take my big section tool, I'm going to click it, I'm going to go Edit, Copy, go to my, let's say, model template, which is here. I'm just going to go Edit, Paste. As you can see, it pretty much lies at the top of it. We can't actually see the model beneath it. So first of all we need to go to, let's take this opacity or transparency down. So with this layer selected, get your big section tool, select the layer you've just pasted in, you see, and then just go to transparency over here on the right hand side. You can also find it in window and then transparency. And then just take that down to about 40%. And as you can see, you can now see your model template and you can see your fashion illustration and you can map them or match them up just simply by clicking uh, so you can simply, on your arrow keys on your keyboard, you can nudge them left and right, up and down, etc. And you want to try and map it so that it's almost exactly the same. So mine's a little bit shorter, so let's just take that a bit longer. I think it's because um, I did these illustrations a while ago and I used a different model template, so I'm just going to try and map that out. Well, I mean the length was slightly different. So I'm just going to match up that bottom foot there. And then if you see on these top corners, you can click and drag. If you hold down the shift key, it will proportionately resize it. If you don't, you're going to have all kinds of issues. So click and drag, but use the shift key to do it proportionately. And let's just move and nudge that around. You can take a little bit more time or less time on this. I'm looking for the arms. You see here I've got this little arm line here. I just want to match that arm and the hands are really important as well. So you can see that this is ever so slightly wider here. Yours will be proportionate. Mine's not. I'm trying to map it from an existing. There we go. A little bit more, nudge it back in my arrow keys. That's looking pretty on point. The length is looking not too bad. It's a little bit too long there at the bottom. That is looking pretty much spot on. And once again, you can use the details of the hands to find out exactly what's going on there. So I'm happy with that. And I can now start to trace my fashion illustration or digitize that illustration onto my model template. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my big section tool, click and drag over all of these items. So I've got the model template and my fashion illustration. I'm gonna go to object and then lock selection. That way it just means I can't move it, I can't edit it or do anything. So now let's start our fashion illustration. So hopefully by this point you should be pretty good at using the pen tool. If you've watched our, uh, our fashion illustration tutorial part one, two and three, you've been using the pen tool to create, you know, these sort of like objects. Uh, and obviously use the curve tool to create curves. So this is basically the concept we use when it comes to drafting or um, let's say creating our illustrations. So I'm going to start off and now what I'm looking for, I'm looking to trace my illustration, in other words this scanned image, but I'm also looking to map it to the model template. So her neckline, I'm slightly off here, so I'm going to go from this point. You can zoom in, so it's just control plus to zoom in, control minus zoom out, and then hold down the space key, click and drag to move around the page. So get your pen tool, I'm going to go for a black stroke color, so double click it, and you can select red or black, whatever color you want. I'm going to go for black, click OK. I'm going to go to my stroke, or my line art here. Just click on those three little lines, and I'm going to take it down to about 
You can use whatever thickness you want, but 0.75 seems to work well for this illustration. And I'm just going to start at this point. So I'm going to click, and then going to click and drag. I'm going to click at this point here, but also because there's a little seam here, I'm just going to add some like, little details. So I'm just going to go in a little bit. It almost denotes that the fabric is slightly thicker than it should be. Click and drag. You can go around this whole item. Once again, there's a seam here. It's going to take a little divot in there. It just adds a bit of depth to your illustration. And what I'm doing is I, we work in layers. So first of all, we're going to create our outline layer. So we're going to trace around this whole item and then add all the details such as these necklines and the zips and all the other bits later. I'll explain why in a minute. And also you want to use really long sweeping curves. So I'm going from this point, I'm going to click and drag to create a nice long sweeping curve. And I'm not going to use my existing illustration, I'm using nice neat lines. Click on that point, click here. I'm also, because it wraps around her body and it's slightly larger, I'm going to go for a little bit down here, click up, click and drag. There we go. And once again, this is like an opening. So what I'm going to do is, let's just move that point. You can nudge that point along with your arrow keys. And let's just move that out a little bit. Get the pen tool, click on that point. I'm going to go up ever so slightly because I want to note that that is an opening. I'm going to click that point there. Oh, sorry. Let's go to about here. No, let's go to this point, then to that point, then to that point. That's better because it's once again wrapping around the body and we're going to add a little line here to add that detailing. Let's go to this point, click up to the top, click and drag. Here we go, so we're mapping the whole outline. Click, let's zoom in, let's go for a little divot, click, let's do the same here as well, little divot there, click and drag, go into the actual model template neckline here and then down a little bit, let's go to this point click and drag, down to this point about here, actually no, let's go a little bit further down, there we go, I'm doing this quite quickly, you can be a little bit um, slower and take your time, let's go to the actual model neckline, and then to close it just simply click and then click and that's one complete item, I've got a little bit of a dodgy line here, so let's just zoom in, let's just move that up ever so slightly to create a more cleaner curve. You can move these points around if you want to, just get your small selection tool, which is the white one over here on the left, and you can click and move it, you can nudge it around with your arrow keys, it's up to you. Okay, so that is essentially our outline, that looks a bit odd, let's move that across a bit. So this is our outline, and the reason why we work with outlines first of all is because this is essentially going to be a closed object, and so if we add colours to this, let's just add white, you can see that we can now add details on top of this, but it doesn't actually interfere with that background sort of like color layer. But before we do that, we can't actually see the illustration, so I'm just going to remove that fill. So this is our outline layer. I'm going to do this pretty much for all of my elements, okay? So we have the coat first of all, that's my outline layer. I'm then going to start creating the outline layers for all the other elements of this design. So let's go for this one. Click, let's drag, and obviously you will become quite quick at this and these illustrations won't take a huge amount of time. Because this is one independent element, so for example I want to maybe have a different colour for this one, I'm going to simply create a closed item that is separate. So I wouldn't just leave it like that, I would click on that point again, click on this point and then try and map the outline of the other jacket, because I can fill it with a separate colour to my jacket which is really handy. Same for this side as well, click, click, Let's take that in a bit, let's click on that point, and let's just map the outside of my jacket, that's great. Okay, let's do the leotard now, let's do the outline. So I'm going to click, I'm going to create a point here. I've actually lost a bit of the um, fashion illustration artwork there, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pretend it's going to be roughly about here. I'm going to go across, I'm not going to go down to the crotch point because these jeans or these trousers, sorry, these baggy tracky pants are going to sit on top of this, so I don't have to worry about this bottom edge being clean click and drag and we explain a little bit about layers in a minute. There we go, we're going to map that model outline there, that very very faint little line there. We can maybe nudge this point down a bit, create that curve there, a little bit less, there we go. This one as well, we can bring this in a bit, we can also add a bit of a curve to that, there we go. And then once again I'm going to take this up into my coat there we go, to create that finished object because my coat's going to sit on top of that leotard. Imagine clothing in terms of layers on the body. So obviously the coat will sit on top of this leotard and I'll show you that now. So let's just select that item, give it a fill, let's go for white, 
and then what we do is click on this, we're going to go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front, and as you can see, it does the work for us. But let's just make that transparent once again. Same for these trousers. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to show you quite an interesting little tool here. So we have this like little zigzag or rumpled edge, which sort of like denotes a kind of concept of an elasticated waistband. So to create this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my point, get my pen tool, click here. I'm going to go slightly further out, click. Let's create that nice smooth curve. And then we can go to, let's just click off, select that line, go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Zigzag. And we can take this down to, let's say, 0.2, for example. And then here, so it's very, very small, we can maybe have like, there we go. So looking at about ridge per segment 56, maybe a little bit more. You can either have it as a corner or you can have it smooth. I think I prefer the smooth option. Click OK. And then we can do the same for the bottom piece. Click. Click and drag to create that nice curve. And we can then go Effect, Apply Zigzag, and it'll apply the same technique to that bottom edge as well, keeping these consistent. But next what we want to do is, uh, at the moment it's just a line, I want to actually fill this. So I'm going to click on this line, hold down the shift key to queue up my selection, click on this line, go to Object, and then go Expand Appearance. And now we actually got these individual little points that we can manipulate and change. So now, I'm going to get my pen tool, I'm going to click on this point, click on this point, join that together, click on this point, oops, click on this point, click on this point, and join it together. So now we have that complete item. So if we fill it, there we go, it's actually a waistband which is looking good. And to be fair, it's quite sharp on these edges here, so maybe what I'd do is I would get my Convert Anchor Point tool over here, and I would just maybe give it a little bit of a, a bouncy edge or a softer edge. There we go, like that. You could also maybe add a point in the middle here, and then just nudge it back in. So it's a bit of a smoother line. Same for this one. Let's just move that out. We can add a point in the middle and then just nudge it back in. So it creates almost like an elasticated waistband effect. So once again, so we're just creating outlines at the moment. We're not putting any details into this. So I'm just going to do the same for my trousers. I'm going to speed this process up. Okay, so now we've created pretty much all of our outline layers, which is great, which means we can now basically fill these and they will all sit on top of each other and we'll get a nice outline. So this can work great for our color layers. However, what we need to do now is obviously add these details. We have these like little um, loops, we have the drawstrings, we have the pockets, and we even have these little trims on here as well. So the detail layer, we're going to do something slightly different. So we're going to change our line thickness to be, instead of 0.75, we're going to go 0.35, so half of that. So essentially what you're looking for is the outline layer needs to be quite thick, so it creates, let's say, um, not texture, but like depth. So when we basically add our little trims, like this for example, and we have a slightly thinner line, it looks as though it just gives a little bit more sort of like depth to your drawings, okay? Because we're saying, look, this is not the finished edge of our garment. This is actually a seam line. For example, this line could be thicker because it's actually where you'd put your hand into. But I'm going to show you a little technique first of all. So if you want to create really beautiful lines, so for example, this is great, but it might not be exactly parallel. You could spend a lot of time sort of like making sure that this is correct, and it could take a bit of time. What you can do instead is get your pen tool. Let's click this point and then this point. Let's create that nice curved line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then up the line width steadily until I get something that looks a little bit like my trim. We can even get our little selection tool, click on the end point, and then nudge that up ever so slightly so it's in line with our outline. I'm going to do the same for the opposite side. I'm going to click, click, and I'm going slightly over the outside here. I'm going past the outline of my garment. Because what I do now is it's great to have this as a line, but I want to fill it as well. So let's select this one. We're going to select this one as well. Hold down the shift key to queue up that selection. Go Object, Expand, and that will turn that Fill and Stroke. Click OK. And so now it's turned it into an object. If we then change the line width to be 0.35, and then we give it, let's say, No Fill, you can see it's now perfectly parallel, which is looking great. What I'll then do next is I want to make sure it's the same as this. In other words, it meets the outline. So what I'll do is select this item. I then go to the scissor tool and I'd snip here and here. I'd then obviously just select this outline piece, delete it, select this piece here, and then just go to my pathfinder, which is this on the right, and then unite. 
You can also, so then it's one complete object. You can find the Unite or the Pathfinder tool in Window, Pathfinder, there we go, so Window, Pathfinder, and then it's this little one here. So you have it selected, and then you click Unite. Do the same for this side. I'm going to simply snip just there, just there, get my small section tool, click on this end piece, remove it, click on this, and then Unite, which is great. And we can maybe just move that outline point up ever so slightly. Once again, I'm not worrying about these going into this waistband because the waistband will eventually sit on top like that. You see? Okay, great. But also, as I said before, this should probably have a line thickness uh, which is similar to the outline because, so let's just simply click, click here and click here. Let's try and trace that outline. There you go, it's slightly thicker. The reason why is because then it makes it look like this is a seam, but this is actually an opening. So I'm just going to simply click and trace that line. There we go, great. Let's do the rest. So now we have this huge sort of like drop crotch sort of like seam here. And also to make this a little bit more stylized, what I could do is turn this to be. 0.35 and then what I could do is get another line click let's click about here click and drag let's mimic that line let's make this we can make it 1.5 perhaps and then if we just add this little rounded cap and then we have like more of a stylized line so it's almost like it's darker here it's lighter here so it denotes that there's more fold here than there is on this fabric so it's just all about stylizing your illustrations then let's just start to add wait let's use that 0.35 let's then start to add some of these, let's say, fold lines to make it look and feel like it's a three-dimensional object. Once again, we're always using this pen tool by clicking and dragging and curving those lines. And the more sort of like, let's say, folds you add, the better your illustration will look. So I'm going to do this reasonably quickly. So once again, we create our outline layer and then we just go in and start to add our details. I'm not doing a very good job of this because I'm doing it very quickly, but you kind of understand the concept. And the more you do, the better your illustrations will look like that for example. I'm just going to speed this process up because you kind of understand the point but I still want to create this fashion illustration to show you the finished piece. Okay so we've now sort of added the details or the folds to this trouser however we want to start adding these like beautiful sort of like little um, drawstrings and they've got these little rivets. So to do that we're going to get our circle tool Let's just zoom in. I'm then going to simply hold down my shift and option key and that draws the circle from the center and it keeps it proportionate. If I weren't to hold that down, it would just be a bit of a mess. So hold down shift and option and it can then draft or draw those little circles. You then have to click off, then go back to your circle tool, find the center, shift and option and just drag out. I'm going to make the inside one thicker than the outside one because that's like a hole and it also looks a little bit better. And then we simply get our big section tool, click and drag over those two objects and go object, group. And then we can just go control C to copy, control V to paste, and then move it off to the opposite side. Next, we can then get our pen tool, click on the center of that point there. Let's create a nice little curve. Let's take it down to the bottom. They're quite long for some strange reason. Just adds a bit of fluidity, I guess. And then we can just up that line width like that. We can even add that little rounded tip. Let's go maybe... 3.5 to fit that little rounded hole. Same here, let's do the same again. Let's make this one slightly longer. There we go, and it's already done it for us because it already has those line elements. And then if I want to color this, I can just simply select these elements here. Object, and then go um, expand. Click OK. Great stuff. And then now we just simply, uh, we can just swap over so we just by doing this we can swap from fill to line art. Let's go to line art. Let's take this down to be about 0.6, I guess. And we can add a fill to it which is white just by simply double clicking here. White. There we go. So it's now starting to build up a picture, which is great. Okay, so now let's look at ribs, okay? So this is a really interesting concept and it's all about using clipping masks. So we have this little uh hemline down here. Now I want to create a rib. Now I could spend ages doing this and just drawing lots of lines but I've got a lot of rib to do so what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to create a brush so let's go to our line tool and you should find it's a line segment tool it's also um, the backspace on your keyboard I'm going to create a line just can draw a line I'm going to hold down so click and drag and I hold down my shift key just to lock it to the vertical axis there let's make this a little bit smaller so 0.3 
because it's it's not an outside line. It's it's almost like a rib. I'm just going to get this line here. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm just going to hold down the Option key. I'm going to click and drag and move it over to the right, and I'll hold down the Shift key as well. So Shift and Option key allows me to drag it to the right. So the Option key copies it, and the Shift key locks it to that horizontal. I'm just going to move it ever so slightly over like that, and then I'm going to hit Control D on my keyboard, and that just duplicates the last move. There we go, like that, looking great. I'm going to do about that many. That's great. Next, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to simply select all of these together. Let's maybe take it down a little bit more, so 0.2. So I'm just going to simply select all these. I'm going to change it to about 0.2 to make it thinner. I'm then going to go to my brushes palette, which is over here on the right. And I'm just simply going to drag that in. And it's going to say, what do you want to create? I'm going to say, I want to create a new art brush. Click OK. And then the direction, I want it to be left to right. OK, you can change direction here, but you want it to be left to right. And then just click OK. So now, as you can see, let's just remove that, you have it's in here. So if I create a line like this, it will apply that. So we can have almost like a uh, a trim that curves to, so it, for example it's a curved edge, I can just create a little curved line that's similar to the curved edge here, like that. I can just simply click on this and now we have a rib, which is great. Uh, and also, at the moment it's kind of outside, which is great, but it's not amazing. So if I get my big selection tool, I can click on this element here. I can go Control c to copy, Control v to paste. Let's just paste it over to this side here. I'm going to go Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. I'm going to click and drag over both these elements. I'm going to go right-click, Make Clipping Mask, and it won't do it. That needs to be at the bottom, so make sure that this line is at the bottom. So Object, Arrange, Centre Back. Let's get this object here. Let's make sure it's a closed item. So go click this object, go to the Pathfinder, unite it. Now let's try that again. Right click, make clipping mask, and it's done it. Great. So this is a clipping mask. What a clipping mask does is basically you have this object on top, and then you have this object below, and it acts like a cookie cutter. So essentially you just simply select these two. This one's on top. You then go right click, make clipping mask, and it will... So it's still in there. Example... Um, yeah, so essentially the object is still in there. I could move it around, for example. I could change the thing of it, but it's just using it as like a template. So I can then just simply get my big section tool, click, and then drag this back over. And there we have our rib. But now because we created this brush, we can just do this quickly and easily so many times. So I'm going to get this element, copy, paste, move it over to here. I can then draw my line to mimic it roughly, let's say about there. Go to my brushes tool, click. OK, it's not quite worked on this side, that's fine. So we can always move this around if we need to. Possibly it's like that. You can play around with it. Then we've got a big selection tool, which is the black one. Click both those objects, right click, make clipping mask. And uh, that's see, the problem is this line is on top. So if I make a clipping mask with both of them on top, you will have a problem. So always make sure that this is on the bottom object, arrange, center back. Click and drag over both, make clipping mask. And there we have it. We can then just simply chuck that onto there. OK, we'll do the same with this waistband now. So let's just simply copy this element, copy, paste, move off to the side. We then get our pen tool, create. And I'm always going outside, so we have a little bit to spare over the, over the edge. Click that. OK, it's a little bit wider now. In fact, I quite actually like that larger um, rib there, so I'm going to keep it. Once again, make sure that this is at the back, so object, arrange, center back. Click over both. Oops. Right click, not compound path, sorry. Select both. Right click, clipping mask. Drag that back into position. And there we have our rib trim. We can also do the same for these ones as well. I'm going to take both at the same time. Copy and paste. Get our pen tool. Same for the opposite side. It's also always quicker to do this uh, in bulk. Take these two, use the brush looks great. Let's click on this element and this element. Object, arrange, center back. And then let's just click both, make clipping mask. Depends how much time you want to spend on your illustrations, but once you have this you can just create so many different color combinations 
which is really great. Okay, so we're getting there. So you know what, now is the time. I'm not going to do these details for the rest of this top because you kind of understand the concept when it comes to um, this illustration. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start adding some color. So we have our outline layer, we have our details, so now we want to add a color layer and we're going to use the outline layer to do that. So I'm going to select with my big section tool, I'm going to click the outline of the trouser. I'm also going to click, uh, I'm going to copy that and paste it. Let's just move that back into position. And now I'm going to fill it with white. And at the moment we have layers. So I'm just going to go to move this up and down the layers. If you hit Command or Control on your keyboard, and to move them down the layers, it's the open square bracket. So Command, open square bracket will move it down the layers. So you can see where it needs to be. And the more you hit that button, the further down the layers it will go. So I think that's pretty much it. Next what we'll do is let's get, uh, for example, let's get these trim layers. So I want to add a color layer to this. In fact, let's add a color so you can see what's actually happening here. Let's get a very light gray. So at the moment, the trims are picking up the outline layer of our trousers. So let's just simply select this item select this item. We can just go object and lock because those were our trims. In other words, they were our, um, that was the rib. So I want to actually get the outline or the details layer. So let's just click, click, and then just go copy paste. There we go. Then let's add, let's go for a slightly darker gray. This can be very black and white to begin with. And then once again, command open square bracket to move down those layers going, it might take a little bit of time, there we go, we've got it. So next let's do the same for this layer. So once again because our trims are on top, they're the uppermost layer, I'm just going to go object, I'm going to select them and go object lock, and then going to click on my actual outline layer, copy and paste it, and then let's just go for a fill. So let's go for, try and get that dark grey again if we can, slightly lighter but it'll do for now, and just simply drag that over to where it used to be, and then once again command open square bracket to move it down. As you can see, we want to get those eyelets in as well. So that's great. And we can do the same for this one. So let's get our eyelets. I'm going to hold down the shift key, so I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on the eyelet, hold down the shift key, click on the eyelet, then click on these two uh, laces. And I'm just going to go object, arrange, bring to front. There we go. We've actually already got a fill on these, which is why you can't see anything in the background. You see? So let's just select them and add a fill. And then for the eyelets, we can do the same thing. Let's just simply select this one. And actually, let's just go Object, Ungroup, and then we're going to right click and go Make Compound Path. Now, what a compound path does is it separates an element from another element, but creates a mask. So for example, if I go Circle, and if I go Square, like that, at the moment, uh, if I fill these independently, so let's go pink. You see how the square's on top and you can't actually see the circle? Well, what happens if you want this circle to be cut out from that? So what we do is simply we have the innermost piece on the top. We select both. We go right click and we go compound path. And now you can see that that fill applies to everything excluding that circle as well. So if we go back, click on this item here. I've already made, so I've already created a compound path. So this is the original element. Let's just select those two together. I'm going to go right click make compound path, sorry, right click, make compound path, and now when we fill it, let's go for a really dark grey, you'll see that it only applies to the eyelet. Same for this one, I'm going to ungroup it, because I originally grouped it. It has to be ungrouped before you can make compound path, right click, make compound path, and then we can just pick up that colour as well. Now if you like the idea of having that much darker in a ring, you can just simply create another circle, like this, to map it. We can remove the fill because we don't want the fill. And then we can just simply go to, let's make it one point. And then obviously you just need to make sure that this lace is on top. Same for this one again. Let's create a circle here. Let's remove the fill and then let's just move it down or at least move this lace layer up. And what I might do is because these are quite complicated and delicate, I might actually just group them together. So I'm going to select my little ring, my eyelet, my lace, and I'm going to go object, group. Same with this one, inner ring, outer ring, object, group. Fantastic, so we're getting there, it's looking really nice. Um, once again, we can color our trim layer here, so if I select it, that's actually our rib, 
so I'm going to lock it down. I'm then going to get the outline, copy paste, move that back into position like that. Then we can add a color. Let's go for a dark gray. Then let's move it down. So command and open square bracket so it's in the right place. Same with this one. Lock that down. Copy paste. Lay it over the top. Let's get that gray color. I have to select it. Slightly different color and let's move that down. Great, okay, so that's our trousers pretty much complete, and we can do exactly the same to all of these other pieces. Um, so, as you can see, if I actually remove my, um, if I unlock all this, if I move my fashion illustration, you can see how it's starting to build up on the model template, and let's just turn this into 100% you can see how it's now starting to become a really quite fun, beautiful, very clean illustration. So let's go back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding details to my top and I'm probably going to speed this up. Okay, so as you can see, we've finished off this illustration, which I kind of demonstrated for you, obviously using those model templates that we created, uh, printing them off, transparency 20%, then we obviously um, created our fashion illustrations, we then ported them back into Adobe Illustrator by scanning them, and then we digitized all of these, uh, let's say, garments, and they all have different color fills, so we can apply different colors to them as and when we choose to, which is really handy. Let's just move that to the back. And once again, I created the other two as well. So we had three in total. So this is one of the other ones, lab. Um, yeah, and so now what you can do, you can basically paste those back onto your board. So for example, this is our, um, let's say our overview or our template board. You can paste them in here and we can now start to add color. So in the next tutorial, I'm basically gonna show you how to add color, obviously by selecting the different layers or the different, let's say, um, garments and then obviously adding color to them. And this is some that we just created very quickly. Now, this isn't very colorful. It's not our finished piece whatsoever, but it kind of gives you an idea of how it just brings your garments to life. Uh, this will be very gray. We're gonna start adding some prints and some textures and also some other colors as well. So please look out for the next tutorial where I'm going to show you how to then start adding color to your illustrations including skin tone, makeup, etc. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.